50 years of freedom. Zambia today is part of the world community articulating a bold vision to achieve sustainable development for all. Rich in natural resources, Zambia is home to 14 million peace-loving people, including 70 different ethnic tribes. We have probably six or seven, more like eight million people living in the rural areas of Zambia. And they are, they are subject to various threats. The United Nations has, has the Millennium Goals to try and raise people off the very bottom, the most, most, most vulnerable people. And in fact, their, their slogan now for, for, for the new phase is leave nobody behind. And we can't leave the Batwa behind. The government of Zambia has partnered with the United Nations on ensuring those facing vulnerabilities are included in the national development process. Zambia's journey to become a more equal and prosperous middle-income nation by 2030 has begun. Centrality of this journey to a thriving modern Zambia is leaving no one behind. The Abatwa, also known as Twa people, are an ancient tribe once specialized in hunting, gathering, and fishing. According to a legend, the Abatwa people were born to dance. As the myth goes, one evening, God asked people of heaven to dance, and the first to begin were the Abatwa, who danced and laughed until the God was pleased. The God thanked them for the entertainment and retired for the day. But the Abatwa continued to dance, which made the God furious. Then the God picked each of the dancers and threw them to the earth. The Abatwa landed in various parts of Africa, which today is the Great Lake region. At present, the Abatwa are part of a wider group of equatorial forest-dwelling people in Africa. In Zambia, they are scattered across the country. Some of them live in the swampy areas as fishermen, and others live a nomadic, semi-hunter-gatherer's life. It's a chilly morning in this Abato village. Pascal Chungu, an Abato youth, gets up early to work in the cassava field as part of the daily routine. Neo Pascal Chungu. As an abattoir male youth, Pascali is required on a daily basis to work in the cassava field. Meanwhile, women in the village have gathered to prepare food. Ngenda Kafuwika explains this fascinating process. <laughs> This sunny afternoon, Pascali and his fellow Abatoa male youth are getting practical lessons using homegrown chicken and are learning how to capture small animals. Ratwa hunters must first learn how to track small animals using homemade traps. On the deep waters of Lake Bangawulu, the Abatwa fishermen are busy at work using large nets. They set traps and make noise to scare the fish into the nets. Back in the village, 
the women look after children and continue to prepare food. Today the meal will consist of vegetables. It is not every day that the fishermen or hunters have luck. In the forest, the hunting and gathering continues. The young people have decided to collect wild fruits. Suddenly, they hear a familiar call and rush to the collar. A large snake has been spotted and they try to hunt it down, but it eludes them and hides underground. Luckily, Pascali has leftover scorpions. <laughs> Like any other youth, Pascali has dreams and aspirations too. Traditionally, the abattoir have led nomadic lifestyle. As they try to adapt to modern environment and adopt different social economic activities like other Zambian villages, the abattoir face challenges for survival. Not having national registration cards, NRCs, deprives the abattoir of the right to participate in national political affairs. This also deprives them from accessing public services. No nationality means exclusion and no protection. <laughs> A major commonality is that many pastoralists, hunter-gatherers and other groups identified as indigenous people have often been evicted from their land or been denied access to natural resources upon which their survival depends. Abattoirs are struggling to be free from a cycle of extreme poverty and they are resisting discrimination from other members of society who often call them as backward people. The loss of key productive resources is impacting negatively on indigenous people's cultures, denying them the right to maintain the livelihood of their own choice and to maintain and develop their cultures and cultural identity according to their own wishes. These indigenous people continue to live on the margin of new modern society and remain the most vulnerable, marginalized, voiceless and endangered group of Africans.
wali ba minority eh, language yesu ili absorbed mu kibemba bantu tulatinu okusekwa as we observe zambia's 50 years in the united nations we recognize that zambia has chosen a peaceful path to progress Vision 2030 for a prosperous middle-income Zambia comes with respect for the equal rights of all Zambians. What does leaving no one behind mean? The Millennium Development Goals will end in 2015 and be replaced by the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. People around the world have said that sustainable development must leave no one behind. Emerging from their traditional lifestyle, the Abatwa people are now telling us what they want in their future. We are hearing their voices, not just singing, but asking for support. Together with the government, the UN in Zambia pledged to make sure that the Abatwa and other vulnerable groups in Zambia are not left behind as we move towards the post-2015 Sustainable Development Programme. Golden Jubilee celebrations provide Zambia with an opportunity to look at how historically discriminated and marginalized people, including Abatoa, who continue to face obstacles to enjoy their human rights, can be recognized and included in the national development process. We must take the necessary steps to ensure that all Zambians' voices are heard and no one is left behind. <laughs> Bani na kwana winga, bani na kwana winga, bani na kwana winga ya ule.